Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to today's session. As you know, we are talking the diseases, inflammatory diseases, which are affecting the external auditory canal. So, in continuation of that series, today we will take up another viral infection, which is affecting the external auditory canal. So, let's start our discussion. This is the slide which we are following. It shows the classification of the inflammatory diseases affecting the external auditory canal. And there are two main groups which are under the headings of infective group and another group is a reactive group. This reactive group actually contains those dermatological diseases which can affect the skin of the external auditory canal and this infective group it is then divided into bacteria according to the causative agent if bacteria are causing then we call it as bacteria if some fungus is involved then we call it as fungal otitis externa and those who are having viruses as a causative agent they are under the heading of viral otitis externa and under the heading of bacteria localized otitis externa which is also known as boil or frankulosis then diffuse otitis externa and malignant otitis externa this uh, fungal infection of the ear it is called otomycosis and viral infections herpes zoster oticus and otitis externa hemorrhagica and reactive group uh, includes eczematous otitis externa, seborrheic otitis externa and uh, neurodermatitis. Out of all these, this uh, bacterial group we have already covered along with that this uh, fungal infections also. We have covered this uh, herpes zoster oticus also in detail. So we are left with this viral infection which is called otitis externa hemorrhagica and this reactive group. So today we will talk about this otitis externa hemorrhagica. Uh, the links regarding these viral herpes zoster oticus, fungal infections and these bacterial infections are there in the description. This otitis externa hemorrhagica, it is also known as Morangitis bullosa hemorrhagica. And another name is used which is bullus meringitis. Now this word hemorrhagica, just focus on that. It has got a significance. So keep in mind. So bullus meringitis. Meringitis is when actually there is uh, inflammation of the tympanic membrane. That is meringitis. And bullus means uh, these vesicles are bully formation will be there. So, synonymously, all these three names are used, otitis externa hemorrhagica, meringitis bullosa hemorrhagica or bullus meringitis. It is characterized by the formation of the bully in the superficial layers of the tympanic membrane and deep meatus of the external auditory canal and these bully, they are hemorrhagic. So, they look dark blue or red in color on otoscopy. If you remember, the bully in case of herpes zoster oticus, they look fluid filled vesicles because there the fluid is watery. But here, these are blood filled. That's why the word hemorrhagica is there. So, keep in mind this. It may be seen in the epidemics of influenza. So that's why it is considered as a viral in origin. Uh, some people say that mycoplasma pneumonia can also cause this, but still there is not much evidence. It occurs in all age groups and uh, usually the symptomatology of this disease, it occurs during 
an upper respiratory tract infection or upper respiratory tract infection settled down but it is followed by this otitis externa hemorrhagica. This is sudden in onset and unilateral. There will be severe throbbing pain because there is inflammation of the superficial layers of the tympanic membrane and this pain will be so much severe that it will be disturbing the sleep and work of the patient. There may be some hearing impairment. Now this hearing impairment, it can be conductive type due to the accumulation of the fluid in the middle ear because it is this preceded by upper respiratory tract infection which is viral in origin or influenza. So due to that upper respiratory tract infection, medial end of the eustachian tube which opens into the nasopharynx gets blocked. Due to that blockage, there is accumulation of the fluid in the middle ear and that disease is called otitis media with effusion. When we will talk about ear, we will discuss in detail what this otitis media with effusion is. But at the moment, just remember, due to the accumulation of the fluid into the middle ear, which is called as otitis media with the fusion, which is due to the blockage of the eustachian tube, which is due to upper respiratory tract infection. So this is a chain of events which has occurred and that will lead to conductive type of hearing loss. But this is viral infection. And if these viruses, they involve the nerves and there is viral neuritis. And if that viral neuritis is involving the vestibulocochlear nerve, especially the cochlear part, then the patient may be having sensory neural hearing loss as well. When bully rupture and they are prone to rupture, remember this thing. So what will happen? There will be blood stain discharge, which we call as zero sanguinous discharge because these bully they contain the fluid which is having blood so it will be blood stain discharge or zero sanguinous discharge on otoscopy we will see blood filled serous or zero sanguinous blisters or bully which are involving the tympanic membrane and deep neatus zero sanguinous secretions will be there if these blisters they rupture and tympanic membrane will be intact. So there will be no perforation in the tympanic membrane. Now in the differential diagnosis, very close contestant is herpes zoster oticus. And another variant of herpes zoster oticus is Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. Because Ramsey-Hunt syndrome actually is equal to herpes zoster oticus plus facial nerve palsy. Then in the differential diagnosis is acute otitis media. In acute otitis media, especially in acute suppurative otitis media, there will be mucopurulent discharge and there will be perforation of the tympanic membrane. Before the rupture of the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane will be congested and there will be cart wheel appearance due to the congested vessels over the tympanic membrane and then diffuse otitis externa in which there will be generalized inflammation of the external auditory canal but there will be no bullets, bullous formation. Now coming back to herpes zoster oticus, we know that that is also a viral infection but there the bully they form usually on the conca but they can occur in the external auditory canal but they can involve the postromedial surface of the pinna also and these vesicles are water filled and when they rupture the watery fluid comes out as a discharge from the external auditory canal. In contrast we have seen that the bully here in case of otitis externa hemorrhagica they are blood filled they are prone to rupture and on a rupture, on a rupture there will be blood stain discharge and their site is outer surface or superficial surface of the tympanic membrane and deep meatus and that's it. They don't involve other parts of the external aortic canal or the pinna. 
as far as ramsey hunt syndrome is con concerned we know herpes zoster plus facial nerve paralysis while in case of otitis externa hemorrhagica there is no cranial nerve involvement acute otitis media as i told you in superative stage there will be perforation in the tympanic membrane with mucopurulent or purulent discharge from the middle ear and before that in pre superation stage there will be acutely congested tympanic membrane with cartwheel appearance which is due to the prominent congested blood vessels over the superficial surface of the tympanic membrane and diffuse otitis externa as i told you no blisters but generalized inflammation of whole of the uh, external auditory canal but tympanic membrane if visible will be normal so this is the main differential diagnosis so diagnosis is usually clinical but still we should go for examination under microscope so that we can exactly know whether the tympanic membrane is intact or if there is some pinhole or small perforation which may not be visible with routine examination so we should confirm it and we should you know different in the differential diagnosis acute otitis media is included so we should rule out that then clinical evaluation of the cranial nerves especially the facial nerve which will differentiate it from ramsey hunt syndrome pneumatic atoscopy and tympanometry to determine the middle ear effusion because in case of middle ear effusion there will be fluid in the middle ear cavity so that the tympanic membrane will not be mobile that will be uh, on, on examination by pneumatic atoscopy we can come to know whether tympanic membrane is mobile or not and tympanometry if fluid is there there will be type b tympanogram then pure tone audiogram so that we should know the type of hearing loss whether it is conductive type or sensory neural hearing loss and its intensity also whether it is mild moderate or severe so that after treatment we can see whether the hearing is improving or still it is persistent then culture from the blisters it is usually not required in the routine cases in non complicated cases because this is basically blood filled uh, vesicles and uh, a surgical example uh, this samples for herpes zoster is of value in cases with sensory neural hearing loss so that we should rule out sensory neural hearing loss because that may affect the eighth cranial nerve as well usually it affects the seventh cranial nerve ganglion but it, if it is affecting the vestibular cochlear nerve ganglion then there can be sensory neural hearing loss and we should rule out that by having a serological sample for rp zoster because this is a viral infection so we can go for antiviral uh, drugs we know that acyclovir and pemcyclovir are available which can be used orally then antibiotics to prevent the super added bacterial infection can be used orally or topically analgesics depending upon the severity of pain again normal uh, if pain is mild to moderate we can use this routine nsaids otherwise the, which are non narcotic of course otherwise if pain is very severe unbearable then we can switch over to narcotics and again either we have to give the oral analgesia or injectable analgesia will depend upon the uh, patient's presentation regarding the pain and cn and drainage of the bully is not indicated because these bully they are prone to rupture so the, the, they automatically rupture and the fluid comes and then uh, pain subsides and this fluid again i am repeating as the name indicates it is otitis externa hemorrhagica so the bully here are reddish in color or dark blue in color because they contain the blood blood and on rupture there will be blood stain discharge so with that we come to end for today's discussion and uh, any queries or any suggestions are welcome and uh, you can post those in comments section Thank you very much.